Congratulations DC, you win the award for the best Marvel movie ripoff of the century. So this is just advice for studios who are actually trying to set up a cinematic universe. Don't try and copy your rival competitor, because you're just going to end up with two things the ex exactly the same. And to be honest, if you've already got one which is established, why would you go and see the other one? Especially when it's the CGI fuckfest which we have to call Green Lantern. Before I start off, I would just like to say that there is going to be spoilers in this review. So if you haven't seen the movie, no worries. i just go and watch it now. If you have it, if you don't, buy it on DVD and then go and see it. And then you can come back and watch the review. What's up guys, I'm Tommy Bowyer and welcome to Movie Rewind. Where today, we will be talking about the complete pile of shit, which is often referred to as Green Lantern. This movie stars Ryan Reynolds, Peter Skarsgård and Tim Robbins and was directed by Martin Campbell. And what I want to know is when you've got such a great cast and such a great director, why you end up with something which is just poor, boring and just sucks in every other way. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So to start off with, we'll talk about the negatives because this movie has mostly all negatives. Now, the first negative is the CGI. Now, CGI should be such a brilliant thing. You're able to create things which you couldn't create before and in such brilliant detail. But with this film, the CGI looks like something off a Saturday morning cartoon show. It is bland, boring, poorly done, and to be honest, it takes you out of everything from in this movie. You can't get into the storyline, you can't get into the characters, you can't even get into the direction the film is going because you just don't believe any of it exists because it just looks so unrealistic. So another thing which comes across as bland and boring in this film is the storyline. So basically if you haven't watched this movie, the storyline is that a secret organisation called the Green Lanterns which protect all the worlds in the universe lose one of their members and a human called Hal Jordan who has just been suspended as a pilot is chosen for the challenge and he has to prove himself in order to defeat the evil parallax which is a combination of fears. Now this storyline might sound great on paper but the way they present it is really bad because they don't even take focus on the characters. Instead, they just keep showing all the so-called brilliant visuals which they've got, which obviously we all want to see because it's not visual pollution how bad these effects are. So this movie also contains action scenes, which fair enough, most comic book movies contain action scenes. The only problem with these ones are that they don't contain any practical effects whatsoever. Instead, it is all computer generated. I know I have hammered the computer generation in this movie, but this lets the movie down so much. It is just boring. It is just so boring. It lets all the action scenes down because you don't even feel the suspense in it because no one's getting hurt. You know there's green screens there. So, to be honest, I'm just going to say, Warner Bros, if you're going to try and do it, try and use practical effects, don't just say, oh, I'll use a computer. Computers are so much easier to do. Now, this might seem surprising, but I'm actually going to talk about a negative which isn't computer-generated effects or CGI, and that is the acting. Now, Ryan Reynolds is actually a really good actor. 2016 Deadpool is still one of my favourite movies of all time, but in this movie, he doesn't care. He really does not care for his role. And you, I mean, I understand why he doesn't care. Because he knows the movie is going to be a flop. And most of the actors in it know it's going to be a flop. So they're just trying to run away as fast as possible. And when that happens, you end up with a movie which has no sense of realism. And you just are not invested in the characters. Because the actors themselves aren't invested in the characters. And that what creates a bad movie. If the actors are not interested in the film, then the viewers won't be interested in the film either. It's just plain as fact. That is the problem that movies has. And nowhere is that more possible to see than in Green Lantern. So I think I've hammered this movie enough with negative. So let's get on to one positive in this film. And that is Peter Skarsgård and the Sinestro storyline. 
So Peter Skarsgård's Sinestro storyline is actually really interesting. You see him turning away from the Green Lanterns, which he holds so dear, and turning to the dark side, well, in a way, the fear. So, in this storyline, I feel, yeah, it's a brilliant storyline. The only problem is, they are so focused on Parallax, a cloud with a smiley face, instead of focusing on something which is actually pretty decent. So, that's why this is only a small positive, as it is not focused on enough, which ultimately lets down the entire film. So, in conclusion, Green Lantern is Warner Bros' attempt to try and catch up with Marvel, which really is a really ridiculous idea, because they just pull off the same stunt as Marvel. The only difference is they focus too more on the visuals, whereas Marvel would actually focus on quality acting and decent storylines. But hey, you know what, Warner Bros? You could try and reboot DC again, and hopefully that won't fail. Oh wait. You never learn, do you? You never ever learn. So that is my review of Green Lantern. If you have taken the time to watch this, I do thank you very much. I hope it was better than my last video. So please remember to like, comment and subscribe to receive more brilliant content like this in the future. And if you haven't seen my other review, which is of The Amazing Spider-Man, then go and check it out right now. It's not brilliant, but you know what? It's not that bad. So I will catch you guys in another one. See ya!